Backend Developer Roadmap. So these past weeks, we've been getting a lot of comments uh, where people are asking us to lay down a roadmap for full stack web development. So we've decided to divide this topic into different videos. And today's video, we will in today's video, we will be focusing on backend developer roadmap. Okay, so first things first, we always start from the basic. So you need a little bit of information about how the internet works and general overview of HTTP. HTTP, by the way, is just a protocol using which the client and server talks to each other. So for example, whenever you go on your Google Chrome browser and you request some information from the Google server, so this request is done using the HTTP protocol. And if you want more information on HTTP, you can go and explore the video we've put down in the description below. It tells you more about HTTP in detail. So the next topic you need to know is web hosting. Okay, now consider this scenario. You've created a beautiful project and you've designed a very fine looking website. Now you have this website on your personal computer, right? But how are other people going to access this website? So that's where web hosting come into picture. When you host your website onto a domain where other people can access and visit your website. Again, if you need more information about it, check the link down in the description below. Now that you have a good idea about the background of how internet works and basic things like that, we can now dive deeper into front-end basics. And you might be thinking, hey, I clicked on a video to learn about back-end developer roadmap. So why the hell do I need to learn about front-end? Well, the reason for that is that in our opinion, front-end is a great way to start, especially if you have never been coding before. If you have no experience with coding, if you do front-end basics, at least it will make your mind shift in a way so that you can think logically. You can start typing some pieces of code. It's like alphabets, right? So with an HTML, you will create a piece of code that will maybe display a form with a button. And that form might just have two fields, like a, lo like a login field and a password field, right? So that will help your mind, first of all, write code, the simplest and most basic form of code, but also you'll be able to see the results of your code right away. So rather than coding a boring server in the back end, in which you probably won't understand a lot, you can start with these front end basics because that will allow you to visualize what you are coding right away in a few seconds. So let's say, let's take an example of creating a login form. So HTML will help you just create the labels, maybe the input boxes and a button. And then CSS will help you to make that form beautiful, right? Who sees a gray button anymore, right? So you need maybe a background, a nice font, maybe a button would look better. Maybe you want to make your website uh, be able to change themes from light to dark, right? All of that would be done by CSS. And now the final piece of the puzzle is JavaScript. You have a form, people can write things into it, but no one can submit the form, right? So when HTML and CSS build the skeleton of the website, JavaScript comes into the picture and records the actions. It can record any kind of thing from animations to user actions. For example, an action can be click off a button. So when user writes things into the input boxes and clicks the button, only then you can select the information that user might have filled and then go to your server and check if the email was good or not. But we'll cover that later. The basic thing is that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the fundamental of web development, whether you're building front-end applications or back-end. So we think it's a great place to start. And going to learning a language, Kritika. Okay, so now that you have an overview of how things work on the internet and you have some knowledge of the basics of the front end, it's time to learn a language. So our recommendation would be, uh, if you follow our content, you might know that we're great fans of JavaScript. And both JavaScript Jonathan rocks. And both Pranav and I, we started our career back with JavaScript and we're still working on JavaScript and also like the frameworks that are related to JavaScript in the backend, which is Node.js. So now you can learn any language, but we'll just suggest JavaScript. But why are we covering language in the first place? Are we still talking about front-end or are we talking about back-end now? Kana, this is a back-end roadmap video. So we're obviously talking about the back-end. Now, JavaScript is a language that, of course, you can learn in the front-end, but again, you can run JavaScript on the servers as well. Again, if you follow our content, you know this, that we can use the Node.js framework to run JavaScript on the server. And you have to write, you have to learn a language to write the core logic of your business, of your 
project, right? So you will learn this language to write the code in the backend. And that language could be anything. You can learn JavaScript, Python, Java, PHP, or Rust. And then there are other frameworks. So just like with JavaScript, you can learn Node.js for the backend. With Java, you can learn the Spring framework or Hibernate or any other framework. And with PHP, you can learn Laravel, which is, again, gaining a lot of popularity these days. All right, moving on to the next one. Well, this, I think, is one of the most underrated skills of any kind of development, whether you're a web developer, software, Android, iOS, I don't care. But version control system is used by every company in the world. You can't give me an example of a company that doesn't use it. And if it does, well, that's just a super exception case because otherwise all companies do use version control system and not just companies. A lot of universities encourage students to make their projects using Git or GitHub or any other platform like that. So it's very important. And if you completely don't have any idea on what a version control system is or what Git is or what GitHub is, well, this is a start for you. With the help of Git or GitHub, you can determine who made the changes to your code, what changes were made to your code or your project, when were the changes made, why were the changes made. If a wrong change was made, you can roll back it and go to previous version of your code. So these things really come in handy when you're working in a group. Imagine if you with five other people are working on a project, you want to make sure who are who is making the changes, right? You don't want to be confused in the end. If someone comes in and completely breaks your website, you still want to be able to go back to a code version that works. So again, this is a great skill. You have to learn it. And there are numerous resources online where you can go and learn about Git and GitHub. Okay, off we go to databases. So if you don't know what a database is, think of it as an external storage system, which has multiple tables, and then the, it has like information stored in those tables, right? So whenever you're working in a backend project, you need this kind of storage system to store the data that your application works with or handles. Okay, so if it helps you visualize, Whenever you go to Amazon.com or any other e-commerce store, right? Okay, so whenever you put an order, where do you think your order information gets stored? Where do you think your customer information is stored? Or whenever you try to log into any website, where do you think your login credentials are stored, right? So that's what a database is used for, to store customer information, to store any kind of information that your website or your application deals with. All right, so for databases, we have two kinds of databases. We have relationships database and NoSQL. So for relational databases, you have a tabular structure, right, where you store records of data. So each table has a relationship with the other table. That's why it's called a relational database. So what we would suggest you to learn for a relational database would be PostgreSQL database, because it's very similar to MySQL database as well. And if you learn one, you'll automatically know how to work with the other. And these two are the most popular relational database, database used in the industry. Right. So for NoSQL, we'd suggest that you start with MongoDB, because again, that's the most common one. Okay. And if you want an idea on how NoSQL databases work, consider them as more object oriented. So they store data in an object format. They don't have a particular structure. So you can store any kind of data in NoSQL databases. And if you want to learn more about it, we have a video on our channel on MongoDB. So go check it out. The link is down in the description below. Database is such an important topic that we dedicated two whole slides to it. Now that you have a good idea of what database is, what SQL is, and what no SQL is, now we can deep dive into more database related concepts. And the first one is ORM. You can think about ORMs as helpers to write database queries for you. You still need to learn, understand the basics of queries, but ORM will help you make queries in a much cleaner and a much safer way. For example, rather than saying select star from customer database, you will create a customer object in your code and then you will say customer dot select all or customer dot get all. It depends on the ORM you're using, but it will help you avoid writing queries. For example, if a new developer is writing a query, he or she can make silly mistakes like not using the indexes, or let's say if someone is deleting a record, they might forget to delete all the other foreign keys associated with it. And I won't, I don't want to dive deeper into it because maybe you don't even know what databases are at the moment. So I'll try to keep it simple and I would let Kritika explain a little more about ORMs. Okay, so 
the only thing you need to know right now is the good thing about ORMs is that they are libraries, right? So if you're working with JavaScript and Node.js, there are already predefined, pre-developed libraries available in Node.js that you can use. You can just like NPM install it in your code and then you can start using them right away. And this provides a level of abstraction, right? So you don't need to know how to write database queries in the first place. But again, you don't need to know, but you should know. You should understand the basics. That's very important. And if you want more information, on ORMs, we have a whole playlist dedicated to it that we created on our channel. We're going to put that in the description below so you can check it out. And in case you didn't mention, we have playlists for both SQL and NoSQL type databases. So we have covered everything. Go and check it out right now. Now, I'll quickly cover the next three topics. The first one is N plus one. What does it mean? For example, let's say you want to select all the orders made by all the customers of your website. So there are two ways to do it. One is the silly way or the noob way. What Noob would do is he or she would go to the database of customers and say, hey, give me all the customer list. So that is one query. And then they would go to the orders table and make one query for each and every customer. So, hey, what order did Pranav make? What order did Kritika make? So now, instead of making one query, you're making N plus one. Because let's say you have 10 customers, you make 10 queries for each customer and one query to get the customer list itself, right? So you're making 11 queries where all of this could be done in a single query if you knew a little bit about joins and concepts like those. Now going on to transactions, and let's keep this one simple because this means having multiple queries run at once, and if any one of them fails, you should revert all of them back. Imagine this scenario. Let's say I'm sending $5 to Kritika, and my bank obviously uses some kind of database. So first of all, they will see if my account has $5. If yes, they will subtract $5 from my account and go to Kritika's account and deposit the money, right? But what if the deposit query fails? What if they're not able to transfer my money from my account to Kritika's account? Well, now the problem is if they have already subtracted those $5 from my account, where is the money, right? So now the bank needs to roll back the whole transaction because if the complete transaction can't be completed, you have to roll back each and every transaction you did in the middle of it. Right? So my money needs to come back to my account and therefore we have a complete transaction flow. Yeah, and while you're at it, go and check out the ACID properties you need to learn or the ACID principles for databases. Yeah, that's very important. And indexes are so common that we don't want to spend time on it. Indexes basically help you make queries faster and you can read a lot about it. There's a lot of information about it and we probably will make a video on it soon. So let's go on to the next topic. All right, APIs. So think of them as connectors. So your front end application uses APIs to talk to your backend server using the HTTP protocol we discussed before. So the most commonly used API that we would suggest you to learn would be REST API, but you have other APIs available as well. For example, GraphQL, we'll discuss about it a little bit later. And the other thing that you need to know is the authentication logic. So remember the Amazon order that you were placing before? So whenever you log into your Amazon account, first of all, you need to log in with your credentials, right? So we need to validate that the credentials you you're using to logging in are correct and they're your credentials. And the other thing is after you've logged in, you should only be able to see your data and your orders, right? So you should not be able to see my orders or anyone else's orders. So that's all part of the authentication logic. Next is OAuth. I'm pretty sure that you've already used OAuth. You just don't know about it. So OAuth means that you're letting other people log into your website using some third party credentials. So for example, if you want to log in to, let's say, medium.com, right? If you want to create a blog there, but you don't want to enter a username and password for medium, but instead you use your Google account or your Facebook account to create a new account on medium.com. So that's OAuth. And wouldn't it be neat if you knew the inner workings of OAuth? So congratulations. Now you've learned all the necessary skills to become a good backend developer. But wait, is good good enough? As Kritika said, it's probably not good enough because there are so many more concepts that you will encounter after starting to work, right? So what if you learn all those concepts before, like caching, testing, deploying your things to the server, right? And there's so many more concepts that we want to cover with you in the next video. Hopefully that will take you from a junior developer to a senior developer mindset because technically 
it's just a mindset right rather than just coding regular things like for loops or things like that you can learn so many more things how things work behind the scenes how your code is deployed how you can add some security to your servers and there's so many more things that you can learn and frankly even kritika and i are learning those things every single day but we have a good idea and imagine rather than going to work and saying hey what is caching i have never even heard about it you would be able to say that caching yes i have worked on it on my personal projects i haven't really worked with caching in a big company but i at least know the concept that enough that alone is a huge difference between a junior and a senior developer because you are on track to become a better developer a great developer so stay tuned for that video and if you're watching that video after 3rd of september chances are that the link to that video is already in the description below so go ahead and check that out thank you for watching and see you in the next one ciao bye